Hey everybody, this is kind of like a demo slash tutorial video of this open source uh, Unity plugin that I've made. Uh, it's called Unity 2D Destruction. First, let me just run the demo scene and show you what it can do. Uh, this is a tool for uh, destroying 2D sprites and making some cool kind of fragmentation effects. So this is the kind of thing that you can achieve with it. You can split things into triangles or you can split things into Voronoi fragments and uh, they're all it's all done automatically uh, so that's about what you can do. Alright so let's just jump into how we use it and see some of the features. So I'm going to delete some of these objects that are in here so we can start from scratch. So all we have in here is the ground and some UI. So first what you do, what you want to do is drag in a sprite. Any and it only supports Unity sprites right now, so if you're using something like 2D toolkit or something, at least for now you're out of luck. You gotta use a Unity sprite. So you drag a sprite in and then uh, just add an explodable component and then you also need some kind of collider. And you can either use a box collider 2D or a polygon collider 2D. Alright, so you, you do kind of want to mess with your collider a little bit. I find that when you just drag it in like that and it does automatically, it generates a lot of extra unnecessary verts in this collider mesh and the the fragmentation process uses these points so you don't want a bunch of extra points so we just go through and delete alright that looks pretty good alright so you got your explodable component you got your polygon collider 2D so now let's look at the explodable script here um, first shatter type you can uh, you can change between triangle and Voronoi um, triangle looks like this, uh, just breaks it into triangles, and then Voronoi looks like this. Usually you're going to want to use this to get uh, more interesting shapes. Um, next is extra points. So as I said before, it uses the points of your collider, the verts of your collider, to kind of calculate the different pieces, but you might want maybe different pieces with the same collider to look different, or you might just not like the look of it, so you might want to add in some extra points. What this does is it just puts a random, it'll put whatever number you put in, so 10, it'll put 10 random points in here and use that for the fragmentation calculation. And uh, it's randomized, so each time I do it, uh, it'll look a little different. So you can kind of mess with that and uh, until you get a look that you want. Next is subshatter steps. Um, you may or may not actually want to use this. It's kind of another way to get more fragments than you would normally. Uh, and what it does is it takes, after it shatters it the first time, it takes each piece that's created and then goes and does the same shatter effect on that. And I find that you really don't want to probably put more than one sub-shatter step in here. So this is what it looks like normally. And this is what it looks like with uh, a sub-shatter step. Uh, so yeah. You may want to use that, you may not. I personally think just using the extra points gives you the best, kind of the best effect. Alright, so these next, the next three parameters are just uh, in regards to layers. So you may want your pieces to be on a different layer than your original object so that, uh, you know, you might just want your pieces to fall through the floor or, or not collide with, if you have like a a bullet that's hitting this and breaking it. You may not want the pieces to interact with the same bullet. So you can change the fragment layer. You just uh, type the name of the fragment layer you, that you want it to be and that's like, you know, these layers here. And then you can do the same thing with the sorting layers and then uh, the ordering layer for the sorting layer. Um, the la I didn't mention the allow f uh, runtime fragmentation. So if you want to generate these pieces at runtime instead of in the editor, you'll need to check this box. Um, I would only recommend doing that in certain cases because the fragmentation procedure is not all that optimized. And so, if you if you actually are doing it during your gameplay, you're probably going to see a little bit of a of a little hesitation while all those calculations happen in a single frame. 
but you may want to do it like at the beginning of your scene for example so that you know if you if you're making some game where you're you know breaking pieces of a wall and you don't want it to look the exact same time or, uh, you don't want it to look exactly the same uh, each time the player plays you maybe want to run the fragmentation at the beginning of your scene so you know that's there as an option one ex one other thing that I uh, that I added in here it's called um, explodable add-on and this is a sometimes you may want to let's say you want to break you want to break this rock into pieces but then you want those pieces to be able to be broken into pieces too so you want to add the explodable component onto the pieces that are generated so with this explodable add-on script um, it's just a it's just an abstract class that um, it has this method on fragments generated so when your explodable runs its explode method and um, those fragments are generated it it calls this method um, if a component that uh, implements this exists and it gives it the fragments so just as an example I have this other this other script that I wrote just for the demo scene explode on click and it just basically uh, explodes the sprite when you click on it so let's say I want it I want those pieces that come out of that to also be able to be exploded when you click on them so I made an example explodable fragments and you can see that it uses explodable add-on and uh, here's how me implementing the on fragments generated so it just goes through each fragment that's passed to it adds on the explodable component and then also adds on the explode on click component so just to give you an idea of what that looks like so we have our our rock here and right now it's just well let's add the explode on click on there so this is what it's like normally we'll run the scene and you click on it and it explodes okay but I want to be able to click every piece that comes out of it and make those explode too so we add explodable fragments to it hit generate fragments again now you can look at all these pieces that are generated and see that they have explodable and explode on click on them too and uh, and see they already have all their pieces generated as well so now when we run the scene and we blow it up and then we can blow up all these pieces too right so obviously the one thing I didn't mention is how you actually explode them at runtime you can see example of this in the explode on click class that I showed you you're gonna need to reference the explodable component uh, which you can see here and then when you want it to actually do the exploding you just call explodable dot explode and uh, if you've generated your fragments in the ed in the editor it'll just kinda basically destroy the original object and unparent all the fragments now if you've checked um, allow runtime fragmentation and you haven't generated those fragments in the editor then it'll do the same thing but first it'll run through that fragmentation routine and generate the fragments before destroying the original object and unparenting all the fragments uh... yeah so that's pretty much all there is to it i hope that someone finds this useful and uh... i had fun making it and i think it's pretty cool so let me know uh... if you think it's cool too